Hello and welcome back to another episode of my MotoGP 20 career mode here in MotoGP and this episode we have got round 5 of the season at Le Mans so of course we first got to advance to that point so we'll advance forward one more week and then that should take us straight there so uh, we've got a notification on the technical staff management so a new data analyst applying again so obviously another Isabella Ferreria as we'd expect uh, loses a lot of points on the engine loses a lot of points on the ECU, but it does gain us some points on the frame and the aero, but of course we've already done the aero and to be honest I'm not really planning on doing any upgrades anyway other than that one aero upgrade we did but I'm definitely refusing this one since it's bad in all the areas we haven't upgraded of course but I feel like at the minute we're doing okay, obviously we're second in the championship, let's have a look at the championship standings actually so obviously Mark Marquez is leading currently but only 14 points ahead of myself in second now and uh, Vinales and it's another 15 points further back of me there was a few chops and changes after the previous episode, so if you haven't actually seen that episode, I might have spoiled it by showing the championship, but I do recommend you go check that out before I say what I'm about to say next. So obviously we managed to win the previous episode, and there was that massive pileup caused by Valentino Rossi on the first lap. Obviously he got too wide on the grass, had a massive crash, collected Crutchlow, he collected Quattararo, he collected Morbidelli, and obviously then himself obviously went down as well. So basically three Yamahas were straight out of the race at the start. Uh, Quattararo and Morbid did remount, but they didn't score any points, so that really affected their championship. So Davizioso, despite having another shaky couple of races, is still fourth position, but he is definitely falling out of contention. He's almost got half the points of Marquez now after that strong start at Qatar. But without further ado, we'll head into Le Mans now, and I'll see you in qualifying one. So then, we're here in Le Mans, and once again... We've got a wet qualifying and a dry race, so it's the same conditions as it was in Jerez, so... Hopefully that will play into our favour, and it could play into Miller's favour. Obviously, he got pole position in the previous race. Let's have a look who's in this session then. So, this time, Nakagami and Miller both getting through. It's Morbidelli that's actually in the session with us. So, Morbidelli, Petrucci, Bagnaia, and it's all the same people, other than, obviously, Morbidelli being in the session instead of Miller or Nakagami. So, obviously, in the previous episode, like I said, the qualifying was wet and the race was dry, just like here. So, we found... A pretty good strategy, so do a few laps at the start of the session just so I can get used to the bike because obviously there's a bit of time between me playing the last race and playing this one, a couple of days or so. So we'll head out onto the track, we'll do a couple of laps and then we'll skip to about five minutes within the session to go, do two laps at the end to make sure that we've got nice, nice and hot tyres at the end to get plenty of grip and then try and get through into Q2 of course. So I'm not really that sure about how good the AI are in the... Uh, well, not in the wet condition, sorry, uh, how good they are at Le Mans. Because they, were, they weren't too bad at Jerez, but they were a bit slow. And I think they might be a little bit off the pace at Le Mans as well, but I'm not too sure. As we're coming towards the first corner, obviously it's not really turning in, although that could be just because it's wet. We've gone massively off, so this first banker lap is going to be gone already. Uh, the bike feels atrocious at the start of the session every single time, so it's because the front tyre is freezing, the rear tyre is freezing. Obviously, I know to some people that's not a massive problem. I'm almost a second off in the first sector already. But uh, I personally quite like to have quite a warm set of tyres to push on. I can go much quicker on a slightly warm set of tyres. So, so I can ride on overheated tyres much better than underheated ones. I prefer overheating to underheating. But obviously, in the last episode at Jerez, when I was seven temps under, so we just found two temps in that sector. The rear tyre was quite destroyed by the end of the race, so we went with the medium rear. I think I'll probably go with the medium rear again at this circuit for the for the dry conditions. Obviously for qualifying we wanted to stick with soft softs in the, the rain. So, oh, the front side took then into the Chemin off Boff, or I, I believe that's how it's pronounced. It's probably not there now, 1.2 seconds off, so we lost a lot of time. So this has not, not been a great lap through the S Bleu. Flicking the bike over to the left, turn 12 then. The front end still not really wanting to turn. But it does it does take a good lap to get the tyres up to temperature. You want to do a good two laps when you do a stint in the wet track. I definitely feel like that's what you need to do. So at the last corner, they're not towards the line. Where's this going to put us? P3, but it's probably P3 out of three set lap times right now. So I'm guessing we'll drop down the order a little bit. So I might do another lap and see where that puts us. So almost two temps down in the first sector. Now 55,000 is underneath, and it is Morbidelli's time. 136.3 is the now fastest time. We're now half a second underneath, so it looks like we're going to go to the top of the timesheets. 
bike feels so much better on the second lap of these tyres. Talk towards the line then, is it going to be fastest? Yes it is, by four tenths of a second, because Morbidelli had improved his time. So obviously that time's not going to stand at the end of the session, we're actually going to run out of fuel here. So I'm going to head back to the pits then, and we'll go out with around five minutes to go. So we've got five minutes left, and funnily enough actually, we're still P4, which isn't good enough to get through. Of course we do want to get through into Q2, but it's actually not too bad, considering there's been a few minutes since I did my lap time. We're definitely losing a lot more time in Jerez, so it was actually probably quite a good lap actually, that one. So we'll go back out onto the track then now. We've got a fresh set of tyres and we'll do two laps right at the end of this session to try and get that top spot and get into Q2. So I've dropped down to 8th place now apparently. There's three minutes, well just under three minutes to go. Which should just mean I've got enough time to do two laps then. So over the line. A crash for Daniele Petrucci. There was quite a few crashes going on in the Jerez qualifying I remember. So we go through turn, well that's turn 2 actually isn't it? So there's turn 1 and turn 2. The first, like, proper corner, really, is turn three. Although you can make a move through uh, turn two, I suppose, if you are brave enough, or you can use it to set up a move for turn three. We have done that a few times in the past. So we're actually still going slightly slower than we were on the previous lap in that first sector. I think that's mainly just down to the fact that the tyres aren't up to temperature yet. So I'm going to try and save a little bit of fuel on this lap so I can go for a proper flying lap on the next one. Actually, a personal best in this sector. Only a tenth down on what Morbidelli has done. So this might be a pretty good lap on its own, although we have just run a bit wide to a garage there. Still around two temps off. So we're still going personal best. So coming up towards the line then. Two temps off, which actually has put us P2, so that would be good enough to get through. But we're going to go for obviously this last lap. It should be even faster because we could get displaced, but this will be the last lap of the session. So one tenth underneath Bang Nia's time now. So Bang Nia's actually gone top of the timesheet, so it's a good job we were going for this second lap, otherwise we wouldn't have got through. 57,000 down on his time now because I made a bit of a mistake into the museum, a bit of a stop, he ran wide. So three tenths underneath now coming out of the chicane. Coming up towards the line then, is it going to be fastest in the session? Yes it is! So then we end that session, top of the session, going through to Q2 with Francesco Bagnaia. So once again we've managed to achieve the qualifying goal. Morbidelli and Petrucci both being knocked out here, so I was saying in the last episode, Morbidelli's season's been going really badly because we were talking about Rossi's and then I saw that Morbidelli was even further down the order, so Morbidelli's season is really not going very well. We've only just managed to pit Bang Nia. We actually lost quite a bit of time in the last sector. Uh, Laquona in ninth and Oliveira in eighth, then, so hopefully those guys can come through and get some points. Alex Marquez back of the grid, so it's taken a bit of a downturn since, obviously, in the last episode he got through into Q2, although he was seven and a half seconds off the pace, so I'm not sure exactly what's happened there to him. So let's head into Q2 now and let's see what spot we can get on the grid. So here we are then in Q2 and of course once again it is a wet track and obviously as I explained in the last episode it's not going to be the level of dryness the last session finished under, it's going to be the wetness that it started under obviously because that's just how this game works and that doesn't really have dynamic weather. This is the closest you get to dynamic weather where the track dries out but it doesn't save how dry it is from session to session unfortunately. Hopefully that'll be something we can get for MotoGP 21 perhaps. So I'll go out and do a lap at the start of the session just again just to sort of bed myself in and then we'll do the uh, couple of laps right at the end of the session. So I'm on the same set of tyres I finished the previous session on. May as well save the soft soft, the fresh tyres because we've only got one front tyre left. May as well save that for the actual proper run at the end for the fastest time of the session, of course. Hopefully some of that AI will get caught out again, but I'm guessing they probably won't. They seem to be a little bit better with it this time. Or in Jerez, they were getting massively caught out. I think I was fastest by about a second in uh, Q1 in Jerez. And then uh, Q2, me and Miller were miles ahead of everybody else just because we did our laps right at the end. But it seemed like Bang Naya did his right at the end as well. So we're going fastest in the first sector. It seems like no one's set a lap time yet. So of course we're going to be going fastest then. Usually there is a time actually to benchmark against. It's quite rare that you don't get one. I think Morbidelli, not Morbidelli, sorry, because Morbidelli didn't get through. I think Quartararo is just up the road in front of us. So towards the line then at the end of this first lap, 35-8. Obviously quite far off what we'll be doing at the end of the session. So we'll head back to the pits then and fast forward and see where we still are at that point And then we'll go for two laps right at the end. So we're just shy of five minutes to go then. We are at the bottom of the timesheet, it's quite a way off everybody else. Marquez, 34.3 is the fastest lap time, so we'll put on a new set of tyres and we'll head out. Obviously we had an extra rear tyre compared to the front, but we may as well just keep that rear tyre fresh. We'll head out onto the track then, we should have enough time to do just two laps right at the end. 
So Rossi's crashed apparently. I was about to say Cal is going to be in front of us, but he's just gone in to the pits. That's a bit of a saving for us. Makes no sense that they're going in at this point of the session though, because this is where the fastest times are going to come. So it looks like maybe some of the AI have been caught out again. I wonder if Jack Miller will do an absolutely amazing job. Someone just come out the pits there. They are really, really doing it fine. They're only going to get a chance to do one lap right at the end of this session, where you'd le you definitely want to. It's Quattararo has just crashed. I think I thought it was Quattararo coming out the pit lane, so perhaps there's a bug this time when they come out the pit lane that they crash. In fact, actually there is. I remember on day one I actually got it when I was coming out the pit lane. So we're half a second down on what Marquez has done so far. So Marquez really putting the hammer down in this session. I suppose the first sector would kind of suit his riding style, so it would make sense that he'd have quite a big gap over potentially everyone, not just me. But we'll see where we're put at the end of this lap anyway. So we're going down towards Garage there then. Will we have found any time? We're half a second off now. Alex Rins has crashed as well, so lots of crashes in this session once again. Only two tenths off Mark's time now, so we're finding some time as we get towards the end of this lap. Obviously the track drying up is definitely going to come into our favour a little bit. Short towards line then. What's it going to be? 34-0, so faster than my previous time. Up to fourth place then. Andre Vizioso has now had a crash. This will be our last lap off the session. So a tenth down on Marquez's time. So once again, Marquez's first sector, amazing. 24 thousandths down now, so we're finding some time. Now we're three tenths underneath the time, so we're looking to be on provisional pole. And it should be pole position because we're right at the end of the session. The flag is now out. Sliding through the last corner, coming up towards the line then. Are we going to be able to go pole position here in Le Mans? Yes! It's pole position. Finally, we get our first pole position of the season. Of course, it comes in the wet weather conditions. We don't have the one lap pace in the dry, it seems. But the last two races, obviously, having wet qualifying, starting second, just missing out to Jack Miller, obviously, in the previous race. But this time, we're on pole position for the French GP. Half a second in front of Maverick Vinales, who must have been the rider that was actually behind us. He's just pipped Marquez's time. Crutchlow back on form there, only four thousandths of a second away from Marquez's time. So it was all so, so close at the front. Look at all the time separating those three, barely anything. Then Quattararo in fifth place, Rossi down in sixth, but he actually did the same time as Quattararo, although it's credited as an extra thousandth behind him, which makes no sense. Dovi seventh then, very good qualifying for Nakagami in eighth. Rins in ninth, he really wants to get his championship charge back on. He's not really a threat for the championship right now, but he definitely wants to try and get up the order a little bit. He's not had the best season. Miller in 10th then, and Aleish Espagro in 11th. So, so Miller not quite having the heroics he had in Hareth with the wet qualifying, of course, going top of the session. 1.1 seconds off me, and then Bang Naya in last place, 1.6 seconds off. I think similar to what happened to Alex Marquez in Hareth, he just did a time right at the end of the session, which got him through into Q2, but then didn't have the pace of the riders in Q2, really. He just managed to beat the ones in Q1. So then, let's head down to the grid, and we are starting from pole position. This is going to be a very surreal experience, really. I wonder how quickly they'll blast past us off the line. So we're down here on the grid, then, looking at Maverick Vinales, obviously lining up alongside us. So a much better qualifying than in the previous race. Mark Marquez, our championship rival, obviously in third, although... Vinales is only one point further back of us than we are of uh, Marquez. So he's also a rival if we're saying Marquez is a rival. So the, basically the top three in the championship on the front row, we have had the best pace all season. I'm guessing Quattararo is going to be going for it today, of course. He had some horrible luck in the previous race to be taken out in Rossi's crash. And he's definitely going to want to get some points back on the board. So I would definitely expect him to be fighting. Also, with it being his home race, he's definitely going to want to try and bring home the victory if at all possible i'd love to try and make it two in a row obviously i don't know how good our dry pace is going to be how good the ai are at le mans usually when we get back to europe we get into a bit of a stride so that could definitely play into my favor but i feel like the ai are really going to have some pace here in the race so we need to try and get away at the front with them and then we can sort of pick our way through them a little bit later on we can't lose too many places on this first lap so let's get this race started then and just try and get a good start, I suppose. So then, pole position, looking to the left. The other two guys on the front row looking straight ahead. Palmo 2 still front qualifying, waiting for the lights to go out here in France. Lights out of the way, we go off the line. Are we going to get a decent start? We've already lost a position to Vinales. We've lost a position to Marquez as well, we're down to third place. Here comes the Vizioso around the outside, but as we go towards turn two, we're looking on the inside of Vinales, but I don't think we're going to quite be able to get past him here. We're looking around the outside of Maverick now. 
Are we going to jam it up the inside? No, we're not. So we're in third position. Davizioso trying to go around the outside. Bit of a wheelie there. But we keep Davizioso behind. So Marquez, look at Marquez. He's already cleared off at the front. He's going to try and do an Austin S race. Obviously, he doesn't want to lose two races in a row. Quattararo looking at the inside of us. We're trying to slide the rear end. But Quattararo's back past us now. But we've got the run on Quattararo back in front of him once again as we break for Museum. Quattararo going a little bit wide. So we're back up into third position once again then. Don't know how many positions he will have lost from that. Lucky behind us, none apparently. So then, obviously, there is a Yamaha track, Le Mans, so it should suit him. So down towards the chicane we go then. But look how far Marquez is in front. About as one and a half seconds, easily. Marquez absolutely bolting away in this race. Almost having a crash there. The only three riders to win a race this season in the top three right now. Obviously, Vinales managed to win back in Argentina. And Marquez really, really just trying to do what he did in Austin. Clear off at the front and make sure that I can't catch him. So here we go towards the penultimate turn, then we're closing right to Vinales. We have much more pace than we did at the start of Jerez, it seems. Trying to get out this last corner, we've tracked his it a little bit, but it's really affected us badly. So we've not got the run on Vinales, it seems. So starting the second lap, then we've got the slipstream. Here we go, we're going to go around the outside through turn one. Yes, we are. Are we actually going to get to, to turn, though, this bike, hitting the brakes, and again trying to get it stopped? Have we got it front of Vinales? Yes, we have. He's hit us at the back there. He's following our line. So we're through. It's a second position, which needed to be done since Marquez is getting away at the front here. 1.6 seconds. Yeah, I was going to say, it looks like a, at least one and a half seconds. I did say that, obviously, around the, the previous lap, but he's definitely, definitely got his head down. He's trying to get away from us. So towards the line then at the end of the second lap. Marquez now 1.9 seconds in front, so he's still extending his lead ahead of me. So out the last corner, then record him on. Coming up towards the line. This time, 131.9, so 1.3 seconds behind Marquez. So we're bringing the gap back down. And something I've completely neglected to mention is it's actually our team's home race, obviously being a French team. So they'll definitely want another victory if possible. All of a sudden, we've taken so much time out of him on this lap. He was about a second in front still at the beginning of this lap. He's now four tenths in front, and we're still gaining on him now. So it seems like once we've got close to him again, his pace has slowed down. And everyone else behind is absolutely gone now that we've got far in front of them. If you look on the mini-map, there's no one anywhere near me and Marquez. So now I've got the rest of the race, really, because we've caught him up. So just try and play with him and see where we can get past him there. So 31-9, once again, we're now half a second behind him at the end of the fourth lap. Quattararo is still stuck behind Vinales. Rossi down, not even in the top ten by the looks of it. Here we go, then we're closing through La Chapelle. Only two temps down. He's gone a little bit wide through the exit of La Chapelle, but that's probably just his line. Actually, seems like he picked up the power a bit better by doing that. Go towards the museum. I think our best shot at getting him is probably into the chicane out of Garage there. But he's got a bit of a good exit out of the museum. They lose a little bit on the brakes into Garage there, I think. And then on the exit of Garage there, they lose quite a bit because they don't take the corner that optimally. So you can get on the power around here. There you go, we got the exit on him. Although he actually didn't do too badly this time. He was losing more time on that previously, so I don't think we're going to quite be able to pass him here. I can break a lot later into the chicane, but obviously I've got to be close enough to actually be able to shove it up the inside. Through the chicane then, on the curb. We've got the run, going down towards this right-hander where we did a five-man overtake once back in MotoGP 18, if you've been subscribed that long. That was probably one of the most intense things we've ever done. But we're all over... Uh, we're all over the back of Mark Marquez as I'm struggling to talk here. Obviously trying to concentrate on the riding as well. So coming through Recordamon. He's going to get a better exit than us once again out of Recordamon. This is where we're really struggling. It's where we're losing a lot of time in qualifying. So 32 6. So much slower than anything we've done previously. So we can't fall into that trap of going too slow. But here we go through turn two. Now we're not going to be close enough to dive up the inside to turn three. But we're definitely closer to him than we were on the previous lap. We're closing up once again through the S Blur. It's very, very difficult, to be honest, to find a way around him because his best part of the circuit's out of the last corner, and that's probably the best overtaking opportunity on the track, other than the hairpin. Uh, not the hairpin, sorry, the chicane. And he's, he's just really good out of the, the critical traction zones, much better than most of the other AI are. We've not been too bad out of there this time, out of recorded on. So 32.5 once again, so we've definitely slowed down massively compared to what we were before, but we're miles ahead of Inyalos now. So having a look around the outside through turn two... We're just not close enough. We would have been able to dive up the inside of turn three if we were a little bit closer. But just not close enough, and we've made a bit of a mistake there. Oh, the rear sliding as well. That's where it cost us a few tenths of a second. Here we go then once again on the run down towards the chicane. Are we going to be close enough to go for anything? If we look on the outside, they go very well defensive on the inside. It just makes it so difficult. If I was a bit closer, then I could just swoop around the outside. 
but I'm just not quite close enough. I'd need to attack on the inside to hold him up. And there we go, once again, attacking on the outside, although that time I probably could have gone up the inside. But we're definitely all over the back of him. We've definitely got more pace again at this point, so we need to just try and find a way to overtake Marquez. We're going to the penultimate turn. This is just where he's slightly better, unfortunately. I'll record him on there. We actually... Oh, if the bike hadn't have wheelied there, it would have been a great run. So 32-4. We are doing a little bit better again. We've actually got to watch out for the fuel. We're literally about to run out of fuel on the line at this point. So there we go through turn two. I'm not going to attack it to turn three again this time so that we don't lose so much time. Right, so I've saved some fuel on this lap, so we should... Be able to make it to the end quite convincingly there with three tenths away back in the 31s again so mark has definitely upped his pace we're gonna have to try anything we can since this is the last lap of the race so we're not close enough through turn three flicking the bike over for four back on the power can we have a look into la chapelle we're wheeling the bike Flicking the bike through turn five down the hill towards La Chapelle. Maybe an attack into Museum might be possible. Marquez running the wider line that he has been throughout the race. So down this straight then. Are we close enough to go for a move on Marquez? I don't think we are actually close enough to make it work. So we hit the brakes then for the chicane for the final time. We're going up the inside anyway. We're going to try and get it stopped here. Past Marquez. Marquez around the outside. Is he going to be able to hold it? We've got the move in front of him. We move over on him a little bit. So it's a little bit unorthodox. Through the S Blue. He's all over the back of us. Through this turn 12, we've got it a bit wide. Is that going to allow Marquez through? Yes, it is. Marquez is back through. So there we go down towards the penultimate and final turns. Trying to go around the outside of Marquez. Are we going to have it? No, we're not. We've gone way too far off the track. Out of record, him on. Get on the power. Marquez is going to beat us to the line. No. Marquez wins in Le Mans. Such a close ending to the race that we just couldn't quite beat Marquez. Obviously, as you can see, we cleared off from everybody else by four seconds ahead of Vinales and Quattararo Rins. Ended up 5th then, Mir in 6th, Crutchlow slips to 7th, Davizioso down to 8th, Petrucci recovers to 9th, so not the worst result ever, and Rossi in 10th place, so he's not really getting his championship started here. Morbidelli only ended up with 14th, Miller 13th, and 15th for Bang Naya, so not, not too great there then. Uh, unfortunately, Oliveira and Laquona seem to both be outside of the points, so it's only going to be me bringing home points for this race then. Marquez extends his lead once again to 19 points. So close on the end. We, we could have brought it down to 9, but uh, it, uh, just a little mistake into 12. I, I couldn't get past him the whole race. He defended fantastically. It was basically impossible to get past him. Uh, Vinales then in third place, now 38 points down on Marquez. Quattararo moves back up to 4th. And Crutchlow moves back up to 6th. Rins moves ahead of Alex Marquez as well, because I don't think he finished particularly great, although he did start last. Rossi, 11th in the championship. Morbidelli now 13th. Really, really struggling here. In the team's championship, then Repsol Honda extend their lead to 43 points. Monster Energy Yamaha are only two points behind us now, so they're probably going to look to overtake us quite shortly. Mission Winnow Ducati with 84 points there. So they're falling a little bit out of contention. Divizioso, just ever since the first race, has not really had it. Obviously, Patronus Yamaha recovering a little bit, obviously. Uh, Morbidelli not bringing home too many points, but Quattararo not doing a bad job there. Then in the Constructors' Championship, of course, once again, it mirrors exactly what we have in the Championship right now. Marquez is basically all the Honda points. I'm all the KTM points because it just takes the highest scorer out of the manufacturer. So Yamaha not too far behind. It's only six points down, so definitely can't count them out yet. But Ducati definitely struggling here. You'd think they'd have the bike, really, that you'd want to be on, but... Seems so far they've not quite got it. So I'm bitterly disappointed to have lost out on the victory then here at Le Mans by such a small margin. My own mistake as well, just going a little bit too wide into that left-hander. And that just allowed Marquez to creep back up the inside. And then, of course, I didn't have what it takes to go around the outside. Maybe if I'd gotten the throttle more, I could have got past him. But it would have been off track, so it wouldn't have been a legal move. So just had to concede right at the end there. It was such a shame. But we had fantastic pace. We managed to catch him up from pulling away. But even still, a pretty good result for the Tech 3 KTM team, especially at home. Of course, Hervé Poncherol probably won't be too upset with the second position. He would have preferred a win, of course, but it's still better than crashing the bike, I suppose, trying to beat Mark. And the top three in the championship on the podium once again. So then, interestingly enough, we gain 10,450 reputation points because we get a bit extra for getting a pole position and we get a little bit extra for getting second place so we actually gained the most reputation I think we have even more than when we won on the credits then we gained 32,863 as we always do and the credits is now ahead of the 
reputation since we're up to 338,348 compared to the 329,500 of the reputation points. So then, with no notifications, that takes us to the end of the video then. So I hope you guys did enjoy that one. A race-long duel, really, with Mark Marquez there going head-to-head. -head. It's just Le Mans. It's so hard to pass. I mean, it was the same at Jerez, really. But I had the advantage coming out of the last corner, so it made it possible for me to be able to pass. But at Le Mans, basically, the places that I like to pass, I know it's not the same for everybody else, but for me where I could ride this bike to. I could have passed into the chicane, like we had to go out obviously on the last lap, and I just ran the outside through turn two, flicking it over into three, or just up the inside into three, uh, obviously right at the beginning of the lap. But I just, I couldn't get the run on Mark out of recording one. I think I, I think I passed Vinales there, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure I passed Vinales round the outside and then on the brakes. But that's just because I got a better run than him through the last corner. But Marquez was getting out of the last corner, out of garage there perfectly, basically. And it was making it impossible for me to pass him. So on that last lap, I'd got not a bad exit. I just didn't have enough fuel. I would have gone for power mode 2 maybe otherwise uh, for a little bit. Probably on that last lap, I should have thought about it when I was stuck behind him. I knew I couldn't get past him. I probably should have just saved up some fuel or maybe just bit the bullet, gone power mode 2, got past him. Pulled a bit of a gap and gone into zero. But hindsight is 2020, as they always say. But enough rambling then, like I said, I hope you enjoyed the video, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day, I hope you're all staying safe, and I shall see you in the next one.